<laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good morning, church. Let's give it up for those kids. Yeah. Well, welcome to Church by the Sea. I just have a couple of announcements. Um, you know, the statistics show that if people are going to come to church and don't go to church, they're going to come on Easter and on Christmas. So if you know somebody who doesn't go to church, this week is the week. Invite them. They will probably come. And with that said, we will have a service at 7 a.m. at John's Pass and 9.30 next week and 11 like usual. Also, I'm here to announce uh, two book studies that we're going to do. One for the men. I wanted to talk about this book, uh, All In. It's by Mark Batterson. And uh, it's a really great uh, book about making decisions because we're one decision away from a total different life. And we will be doing that, men, starting after Easter on Tuesdays. 6.45 to 8 on the dot. And ladies, we will be doing a, a, a book study as well called, uh, what is it again? Save, Save people. people. All right, somebody knew it up here. And that will be Monday, 6.45 to 8. So, with that said, ladies, Tuesday night, five, uh, 6.45, if your husband's at home and he's not doing anything, hey, we're, aren't you supposed to be at church? Just give them that nudge, and they'll, they'll, they'll come, and, and it's going to be an awesome time. I had an opportunity to give this book out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneer football team and the Tennessee Titans when I did their chapel, in a couple years, chapel service a couple years ago. I've given it. I, I've done a study with the Secret Service of this. This is a great all-around study for men. And also for the ladies, safe people, awesome book study. It's men, same thing. Monday night, give, give, the, give your wife or girlfriend a nudge and say hey come out to the study glad you guys are here wonderful day thanks Asif that's Pastor Asif thank you sir yeah we're gonna have a great time so I hope you'll consider being a part of our studies also if you're a first time guest man there's a connection card inside your program if you'd fill it out put it in the offering basket later on or in any of our generosity boxes near the exits that'd be great we'd love to send you a letter just to introduce ourselves to you but so glad you are here guys and uh Anyway, we'll be talking about our Easter services a little bit later on, but it's an exciting time, so we are glad you're here. If you would stand up, say hello to everybody. Have a seat for a moment, please. Guys, we have good news of great joy. It's, that's exactly what the angels said when they announced the arrival of the Savior. We, too, are announcing the arrival of our music Savior, Pastor Chris. Let's welcome Pastor Chris. <laughs> yeah, small less, a small less, of course. But anyway, this is Pastor Chris. His wife, Katie, is on the keyboard. And uh, say hello to her. Hello, Katie. <clears throat> anyway, we're excited to have them there now on staff, and church by the season will be better because of them. And uh, so uh, afterwards, we'll, you'll have an opportunity to say hello to them and introduce yourself to them. But we're so thrilled you're here. Guys, thank you for being a part of our family. Join me in prayer, and we'll go right into our worship. Lord, thank you for your love, your grace. God, you are sufficient for every circumstance we walk through. God, it is our desire to be smack in the middle of your will. Because, God, we know that's where the, your favor is. And, Lord, our freedom is also there. Man, we want to experience that. Lord, as we worship you now, we're proclaiming that there is nothing else that has our allegiance other than you. Lord, you are the affection of our heart, the attention of our mind. And, God, we choose to worship you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand.
Good morning, everybody. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. done for me.
Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your love, oh Lord, it reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness. It stretches to the sky And your righteousness Is like a mighty mountain Yeah And your justice flows Like the ocean's tide And I will live I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, your love, O oh Lord. Reaches to the heaven, and your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Let's sing it in worship. I 
This time we're going to be receiving our offering, so as our ushers come. Hey, just want to let you know, I, I told the first service, and I didn't tell you this last week, we now have text to give here at our church. So if you're like me, you don't know even know where your checkbook is, okay? You have the ability, you can just send a text, it's all, there's information inside your program, but you, t- you t- type in the amount you want to send, send it to 84321. And you can set it up, and it just goes right from your bank account. It's a great thing. So anyway, it's just a convenient way we can give God our first fruits. So, ushers, please pass the plates. Father, bless this time. We ask in your name. Amen. Thank you, Chris and Katie. All right. This is the last week we're using our Target Red Dot. So let me show you. We got a logo for our next teaching series. We're going to start this next week. It's called Fixer Upper. Anyone here to the show? Yeah, of course, right? We do have a logo. And we're going to show you any second. Any, any second. There it is. All right. Good. That's what we're going to do. We're starting it next week, and for the next five weeks, we're going to talk about that. And it's the perfect, I think, setup because you guys know people. And we're going to talk about today how they need to be in church. Next week is like our Sunday. You know, we got a living Savior who was, I mean, he died. He was dead. They, they rolled a tomb in front of it, had guards there and said, don't let anyone open this door. And the door opened. But it wasn't from the outside, it was from the inside. Jesus came back to life. You know, and Easter is what changes everything for us. If there was no Easter, let's go home. Like, I, we can go to the beach. We don't have to be in here, right? But that changes everything. So we set aside the first part of our week to worship because our Savior came back to life. And it wasn't just a fluke thing. He predicted he would do it. And then he pulled it off. Like, man, I don't know, but there's a lot of people that claim to be God's one. And all. Ours came back to life. All right, okay, so at least we can stand at the end of time and go, ours is alive. Okay, God, how, how, we can't argue with that. So anyway, that just gives great assurance to us. So anyway, Easter's a big deal. 
Um, but we are talking today about the zone, and we've, we've been teaching this idea, <clears throat> again, using a silly red dot, just to try to illustrate that God wants us to live in the sweet spot, and what I've had to really embrace, and at times really remind myself, is that God loves me. He loves you. He really, really does. And a lot of people, they don't think that because they grew up in, in maybe a, a home or a tradition where they just they always heard of God being really angry and mad, and, and you're the reason why, you know? It'd be, some people just think God's always ticked off. And here's the truth. He's not happy about everything going on, but he loves you. He's crazy about you. And he wants to bless you, just as we've looked at how a good dad wants to bless their kids. But again, there's always limits on it, right? When my son is four, I'm not going to give him a chainsaw. Right? I'll give him a Snickers bar, but not a chainsaw. Right? So he's got to know the right time, when to, when to give what, that kind of thing. And, and that's really the illustration we've been looking at is God wants us to live in this and again, if you can't see, I'm standing on the red dot, the zone where we are able to receive God's best at the right time, and it's the right thing, so that we're able to use it for the intended purpose that he has for it. And many of us are just, we're out of the zone. Now, we might be good people, might even be doing good things, but if we're not living with the intention of God, how, how can I be in your will today? How can I obey you? Like, what do you want? Many of us just sort of go about our autopilot. You know, we, we get up at 6, we always get our coffee, and we do our teeth, and then we go to the shower. You know, I mean, we sort of have our routines, and we just go about our business without really giving much thought to it. And at the end of the day, we hope we didn't, you know, a, had a good day. But God wants more for us than just having a good day. He wants us to live in His will so that we are intentional of being, again, listening to Him so He will lead us so that we'll be in the right place at the right time able to receive what he has for us. So we're going to wrap it up today because we're going to talk about Jesus' mission because as I began thinking through this, <laughs> it dawned on me, we can't talk about being in the middle of God's will if we don't talk about what was the purpose of Jesus anyhow. Like what is our mission now? We can't talk about obedience without saying, okay, this is what, how we're supposed to be living our life. So let's look at this. It's in, it'll be on the screen. And uh, this is one of my favorite things. Um, it talks about when Jesus basically gave his mission statement, why he was even here. It comes from Luke chapter 4. It tells of the incident. Jesus shows up and he, he's at a synagogue and it, they give him a scroll. They knew he was a teacher of some sort and they hand him a scroll and it's the scroll of Isaiah. And he read, he, and again, he didn't have a book, he didn't have an iPad or a book, right? So he's rolling out the scroll and tries to get to the place where he wants, you know, because he knew exactly where he was going to teach. They didn't just say, here, teach this. They said, here's Isaiah, which, by the way, has a lot of chapters in there, so a lot to choose from. And he goes back and he, he reads a quote from God that Isaiah gave 400 years ago prior to Jesus teaching this. And here's what he says. And this whole passage is all about the Messiah, the Antichrist, the coming one that they've been waiting for and waiting for. Okay, so everyone is very familiar with this passage if you're in that setting when Jesus read this. And here's the passage he reads. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, gifted me, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see. And the oppressed will be set free. Okay, that's all he reads. And then it's, the scripture says, Jesus then takes the scroll, rolls it back up, gives it to him, and it says he intently looked him in the eye. All these people that were there at the scene, he's looking at him, looking at him, looking at him. And then he said, this scripture has been fulfilled this very day. Now to us we go, okay. At that time, that would have been a... Jesus was saying, hey, just read, the Messiah is going to do these four things, and today it's happening before your very eyes. He, if he would have had a microphone, he would have gone, drop, and just said, that's it, I'm done. All right, I just, woo, blew your minds, right? Because he said that he's proclaiming that this is the day of the Messiah. And he just looked there. Some of them were going... It's not the Messiah, it's Jesus. Exactly. You know, and, and so anyway, so I love this because 
Jesus is clear from the very beginning, this is what he's going to be about. This is what his whole life is all about. Now, what I love, we're going to look at another passage from Luke 9. And here's what it says. One day, okay, so again, Jesus said, this is what I'm about. This is my mission statement. Luke 9, 1 and 2. One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples. He had a lot, of, he had a lot of disciples, but these are the 12, the close ones. And he gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then, after giving them authority, he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Okay, so let's go back. Jesus said, this day is fulfilled. Boom, I'm going to do all this. Then he, a little bit later on, he's spending time to his closest 12. He said, I want you to go out and do the same thing. It's just a rephrasing of what he read in Isaiah. I want you to go out. You're going to bring healing. You're going to tell them about the kingdom of God's here. Okay. Now, let's go to Luke 10, the next chapter of where we were. <clears throat> Verse 1. The Lord now chose <clears throat> 72 other disciples. So again, a lot of disciples. He sent out the 12. Now, here's another 72. So you see the progression. This is out to the next circle of influence. And he sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places that he, Jesus, planned to visit. Verse 9. This is what he told. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. So, this is his mission. His mission. He's given it to his disciples. We're now we're going to look at Matthew 28. The last things Jesus said on earth. Again, a little bit different wording, but it's for us. It's not to the 12. It's not to the 72. It's not to the 125. This is for every follower of Jesus forever. This is for us. Jesus came and he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. I have the authority, all authority on heaven and earth. Period. That's a complete sentence. Therefore, because of that, I'm not telling you to do something because I have authority to do so. Go and make disciples of all nations, all people groups, even beach people groups. <laughs> Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. I have it all, and I'm going to be with you always. In the middle, go and make disciples. Go. Of all people groups. It's not this people group, it's every people group. So not only did that include us, if we get to receive the kingdom of God, we get to go advance the kingdom of God. That's our mission. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go be a preacher. I don't even feel like a preacher most of the time, you know? I'm just Jeff. I have a hard time waking up sometimes. I hit the snooze button. I'm cranky. You know? I'm like you. But regardless of what we do, if you're a post office worker, you work at UPS, you work anywhere, we are to be in the mission of helping make disciples, of influencing others, regardless of what your vocation is. That's our mission if you're a disciple of Jesus. If you're not, okay. You're a disciple of something else. But if you're a disciple of Jesus, your mission is to go and teach these things. Now, you don't force people to become disciples, but we can present it. So here's what I'm excited about. Next week's Easter. I think that was a good thing, right? <laughs> Easter. I, we have an opportunity that God wants to use us in... You know, our mission really here is very simple. We want to help people follow Jesus. Let me explain about the people that we know. First of all, uh, Jesus mentioned them in Isaiah. He talks about four different people groups. This is easy. First he said he was going to deliver good news to the poor. The poor are anyone who knows that they need a rescuer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. I'm ahead. Yeah. Well, they recognize their need. So it doesn't mean financially poor. It just means you have a need. 
Well, that's all of us, right? The people that don't think they need this, they're the ones that are in really bad shape. Like the poor, you, all of us, we know that we're lacking, right? We need that. And the good news is, is that we don't have to be an outsider for our help. We can be an insider. When it says God's kingdom is near, that's saying you can be a part of it. You're not an outsider to God. You're an insider. That's God's invitation to everyone, even beach people here. Right? And so for those that know that they need help, they need a rescuer, good news. You don't have to be an outsider to God. Then the next, Jesus said the captives will be released. Captive is something of a prisoner of war. You're stuck. There's some, some kind of authority holding you down that you, you have no way of escape. And though we're not physically like that, but man, many of us, we are stuck. Yeah, we get, we're stuck in bad habits, right? We all have grown up in ways that we either saw happening or we just sort of adapted to it. And because of that, some of us, we say things, we do things, we, we just, we all have our own thing. And here's what I know. Some of us, we're good at changing some things, but we're not good at changing everything in our life. How many people have you spoke with, spoken with? And it, if you were to say, you need to change it, they would say, I know, I know, but I just can't. Or it's just the way I am. Yeah, it is, but you don't have to stay there. They're captives, and we all are. But here's the good news. You can be set free. Like, and it's not just from habits. It's just from stuff. Which, well, let's go on here. Next, Jesus talked about, the, he said that the blind will see. People who don't see the truth, that, though this is certainly true physically. Jesus healed people physically, but even emotionally, spiritually. I've, I mean, let's be honest here. Again, you're in church, you got to be. Did you ever celebrate sin back in the day? Okay, that was, seriously, not theoretically, seriously? Did you ever say, Woo, I can't believe we made it home after last night. Oh, my gosh. Did you see what Henry did? Man, he should have got, you know. I mean, do you ever have that moment? Okay. Of course not. Woo, man. I'm glad you're here because I'm, I'm not like that, man. You know, I got stories after stories when I was dumb and stupid and young. and Woo, thank you. You know, like, I don't deserve to be alive. And, 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 you know, back to, and here's what I know. You just look at Facebook. I got a bunch of friends who live that kind of life in high school, but now they have kids that age, and, boy, they're singing a whole different tune than what they were singing in high school. They were celebrating back then. Woo, look at Sally, blah, blah, blah. You know, and now they're like, I would never let my child do that. I was like, shut up. You are the party leader. I know you. You know? And they, you know, whoo. Well, here's the thing. When it talks about, what are we talking about? Okay. <laughs> the blind will see. I was blind because I used to celebrate. Yeah, man, we got away with it. Yeah, we didn't get caught. Or yeah, you know, what a, what a time. But now I see different, man. My whole perspective is different. The things I celebrate, I just I roll my eyes and go, God, Lord, thank you for your grace. I don't ever want my kids or my friends to go through the stupid that I did because it hurts, you know, and it can be very dangerous. So again, but I was blind, but now I see I see differently. I didn't want to go to church when I was younger, but I do now because now I see the value. God has changed. I was once blind, but now I see. I see the truth of it. Now, the last thing, when it says that the oppressed will be set free, similar to the captives, but the oppressor, those who are burdened by, a, by an oppressive authority or an abusive authority. Now, maybe you know, you've never been physically abused or anything like that, but here's when all of us have been under some kind of abuse at some point, some kind of emotional thing, just... Some people are really good at manipulating and controlling, and maybe it was your boss or just a friend or something, but, but they manipulate, and, and if you're in that real long, they can sure you feel used, they can make you feel insignificant, 
They can make you feel rejected, that you're not worthy, and we carry this stuff around. And so when you know someone says, man, God loves you, you go, oh, not me, because I'm really not I'm no good, and no one wants me, and I have no friends, and again, we have our list. And, and those are lies, but again, because we've been in this oppressive relationship or something like that to where we don't feel we have worth or that we're not capable. Some of us, we had parents speaking this junk over us, you know, oh, you're so stupid, oh, I can't believe that you do that, you know, and not intentional to hurt us necessarily, but sometimes we still carry that around. It's a burden. It's like the big bar and the, oak, and the ox. The ox is yoke, and we carry this for the rest of our life. And we still feel like, man, if people really knew who we were, who I was, they wouldn't like me. They really knew. I'm somehow faking it at work. You know, I'm able to get enough done, and but really, I'm just lucky kind of thing. And so we carry this around, and we, we feel this. And what Jesus' message is for those that feel this oppression, this burden, you can be set free from it. And so that's why when we talk about Jesus and we give our life to Christ, it's not just, well, we have forgiveness now in heaven, but we're changed. Like, we're free. We don't have to walk down the way we used to walk. We don't have to look at life in the same way. We don't have to be all protective of our things because we're not stuck. We don't have the same burden, the same oppression. We're free. And that's what the kingdom of God's all about. And so, because of that, man, I'm excited about Easter. Now, let me show you one great verse. It's from 1 Chronicles. So, we're going back to the Old Testament. David's about to be put in or installed as the king. The King Saul had just died. And David's really the front runner for this position. But here's in this chapter, they start talking about all the groups of people that are for King David. And they list, again, all these different tribes, these groups. But there's one group in particular, uh, the leaders of Issachar, that I love what it says. Look, from the New Century Version, it says this. There were 200 leaders from Issachar. Again, that's a group, a tribe. They knew what Israel should do, and they knew the right time to do it. That's, I, that's what I want to be. I want to know the right thing to do at the right time to do it. You know, there's a difference between... But timing's everything, right? You can do the right thing. You know there's a difference between a foul ball and a home run. It, the only difference is timing. You swing too early or too late, it's a foul ball. But you hit it just right. Same swing, it's a home run. And, and that's why the illustration of being in God's will, being in the zone, is it's being at the right place in the right time so that God's able to do what he wants to do. It's, I think, the concept here. And so these guys were so valuable to David because they knew what to do at the right time. Now, here's another way, perhaps a little bit closer to a traditional uh, English translation. It says from the Iskarites, by the way, that's not my last name. <laughs> Just let you know. It's Iskra, but these are the Iskarites. Is no, it's not. Thank you. It's them. I'm not from this tribe. Um, okay, but here's what it says. They understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. It didn't say they liked the times of their culture or that they approved of the times of the culture, but they understood the times of the culture. And the, here's the application for us. Times have changed, haven't they? Have you noticed, like, this is not Leave the Beaver, right? Or what other show am I thinking of? Father Knows Best, Brady Bunch, Happy Days, Andy Griffith, that's what I was thinking of, that's what I was trying to think, yes. And some of you are going, who are those guys? <laughs> They're members who have died a long time ago. <laughs> they have. Our times have changed, it's not those times. And so, and here's why. At that time, even if you were an atheist, you still agreed you shouldn't lie. Right? You still agreed you shouldn't steal. That's still not a good thing. Nowadays, it doesn't matter. Like, we all have Things are so different in our culture, there's no agreed, set-upon standards for action or behavior, or even expectations. 
different, different times. And, and what I love about this is that these guys knew, they understood the times. So let me explain what this means to us. We today must understand the times, not personally, but for us as a church. I had a guy who was a friend of mine. He was doing a doctorate project, and he wanted to, this is a few years ago, wanted to use our church as a model. And so what that meant was he was going to meet with all of our leaders and interview them and <clears throat> talk about strengths and weaknesses and, and this. But here's what he came to every leader. He said, the success of your church is going to come down to this one question. Are you okay? Do you want to reach messy people or do you want to keep a country club? That's a pretty bold question. Do you want to reach messy people or do you want to keep, maintain a country club? And what he was saying was that many churches, they want to keep bad people out. Think of a country club, right? You pay your dues, and what does that mean? That means you walk in, you get, you can go where you want. This is my, I'm a member here, you know, and I can go to this room, I can get a towel over here, I can go to this room, get this service over here. Like you just, just you come in, you pay your dues, they owe you, kind of thing. And what you do, it's not a club for everybody. It's for people like us. And so we're all the same. We all dress, you know, however, and we we're like a little people group, and we want to protect our country club status the way it's always been and for some that mentality well it's we're the church we got to keep it holy but what he was saying is that for those because times have changed so much understand that if you're still going to go reach people make disciples of all these people groups especially beach people they're going to be messy they're going to be sandy Right? And so they're going to come and they're going to say things that you cringe at. They're going to wear things that you would never wear. But again, it's what is the intention? Do you want to make, you want to make disciples? Or do you want to keep the country club? Very, very bold question that he asked. And he, what he was saying is they know that because times are changing... This is really going to be the issue or the question that every church will have to wrestle with. Are you okay reaching people that are different than you? I want to show you some uh, statistics for St. Petersburg. Well, in general, but also for our, the United States. Look at this. We're the first generation where Americans, if they need, want to change their life, they don't automatically go to church. Back in the day, if you know, if someone said you need to get you need to get your life together, I oh, know I gotta go to church. I mean, that was just the first thing. Nowadays, it's not. You know, finding spiritual life where they get some could say, well, you know what, you need to change your life. You need to join us at the drum circle outside the sunset on the beach. You know, All right? Because it's cool, man. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's it's spiritual. We'll be in one with the name, anyway, whatever. Um, it can be different places. Let me show you a, um, a pie chart that we have. So here, this is a survey. You probably can't see it. It looks it looks professional though, doesn't? It? Okay, thank you. So I look like I know what I'm talking about, even if I'm making it up. This is I'm teasing. This is a survey from 2017. So just last year, they've always tried to survey the religious, religious affiliation of the people of the United States of America. And if you look there, the, the red, that's for those that said Roman Catholic. Okay. Then in the green, those who said they were Protestant, which is any kind of non-Catholic denomination, right? Protestant, Baptist, Lutheran, Assembly of God, all of that. But for the first time, see the yellow? It's actually bigger than the Protestant. The yellow are for people that said nothing. My religious affiliation is nothing. Now, it doesn't mean they're atheists, but they don't like God or they don't believe in God, but they have no religious affiliation. First time ever in our history. Some preacher friends of mine, pastors, are, and I was probably the same way, disturbed when you read that. You think, oh my gosh, our country has really gotten away from what it was. That's true. 
But I sort of see this as a good thing. These people say that they're nothing. But it doesn't mean that they're anti. You see, before, when you moved to a city, if you're Presbyterian, you went to the Presbyterian church. If you're a Baptist, you go to the Baptist church. Whatever's closest. That's, that's your tribe. You're a Lutheran, you go to the Lutheran church. It's your city. These are people saying they're, they're nothing. But nothing means they're still open. Because what's true to that is that, again, statistics still say that like 75% of your friends would come to church if they're invited. 75, I mean, be more exact. 75% of the people who are not at church would go if they were simply invited. Now, here's the cool thing for us. It's Easter next week. And if I just say, hey, are you going to go to church Easter? I say, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to go to church or I don't know, whatever. Here's how you respond. Just go, what? Are you kidding? It's Easter. You have to go to an Easter. You know why? Let's make an agreement right now. Everyone needs to be in church on Easter, okay? Are you with me? Say yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So when they say, well, why do I have to be in, each, in church on Easter? Just Because our church said so. <laughs> Everybody said so. You don't know that? Come on. There's an expectation. <laughs> okay, tell them. You need to be there. Yeah, we said so. Come on. Here's, we're having our 7 o'clock service at John's Pass. So that'd be fun. Bring your lawn chair, or we'll have some chairs there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And we got 9.30 and 11 here, okay? Now, I know a lot of folks are, are um, will be here. They don't ever plan to come back. I'm hoping they will. I'm praying that they will. Because here's the truth. You know messy people, and I know messy people. They're great people. But how much better they would be if they understood that God loves them. They don't have to keep putting the mask up. They don't have to pretend that they're someone or something that they're not. And that, you know what? If they come, your friends come, we're going to love them no matter what. We'll high-five them, handshake them, hug them, unless they don't want to be. Okay? We'll respect that. But we want them here. We really do. Because... we. It's a message that's changed our life. And we know it'll change theirs, too. I just I know God has so much more. So, okay, here's the good news. Just like last, yeah. I'm fast-forwarding through all of this sermon. Three values have been very important to me in my ministry career. So number one, we got to be real. We've got to be real. Because your friends who are nothings, or others even, they, they can sniff out when someone's not being real. All right, we got to be authentic. That's so true. I want that to be true of Church by the Sea. We're authentic in who we are, but this is also a place where they can be authentic to who they are. They're messy. Great. Bring your sand on in. We will vacuum. You got your other stuff? We'll take care of that too. It's okay. We want you here. I think that's the heartbeat of Jesus. That... He doesn't want a bunch of religious people. There's plenty of places where they can get that. I don't want that. I don't like being around religious people, do you? I said this last service. I don't know they really caught it, but you know, the only time I cuss is when I'm preaching. <laughs> I say things, I just go, oh, my wife goes, you shouldn't have said that. You know? <laughs> and, and, and I just, I want to be... No, I really don't try to cuss, okay? That's not my heart. But I do say things, I just go, man, that just sounded so raw. But I, 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 at times it comes out because I just want, you know, when I'm looking at a congregation, I really try to lock in in some eyes of people who I know are far from God because I want them to somehow know that, you know, I have been where they are. And they're afraid to be in here. Or they don't know what's going to happen. They, you need to know God loves you. You know, you do because, listen, he can change you. And, and that's all of us. And any of us who forget that, bless your heart. Because you become one of them. We should never lose sight of who we are and who Jesus had changed us to be. The next thing is relational, a value. 
You know, people, Jesus always put people over stuff, over property, you know? Like, we, we have coffee out here now. We're, we're trying to figure out, is this a good thing? What's... Thank you. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Good. Okay. And water, too. Okay. Egg McMuffins next week. Yeah. What that means is someone's going to spill coffee in here. And I want to show you it's going to happen. And it's okay. It is okay. If it spills, so what? Really? We need new carpet anyhow. Look at it. All right? This isn't something we should really be protecting. <laughs> okay? It's not that nice. If it's spill, we'll get we'll get paper towels. We'll get a carpet cleaner. We'll do it. I mean, I'm not saying throw your trash on the floor, but what I'm saying is stuff is going to happen, and it's okay. It is okay. Because can you imagine you're at the end of your life, and if you're standing before the gates, there's heaven, and God says, "Why? Tell me why you think you you have done enough to be in heaven." Like, why should I let you in? And your response is, I protected the carpet at Church by the Sea. That's not good enough. I'm going to tell you right now. That won't get you far. Okay. It's about people. Jesus never preached about carpet. But he did preach about people. He said, you know what? The greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is just like it. Love others as you love yourself. It's about people. And so we need to be real, relational, and the third is relevant. We've got to be relevant. And that just simply means that we, I talk in a way, I try to, and I want all of us, even our, all of our communication to be in a way that people understand, people without a church background. Some of you are really smart, and you know the Bible probably better than myself. But those that are out here, I mean, everyone, our messy people, they don't know the Bible. You know, they think Noah was married to Joan of Arc. <laughs> Makes sense. Noah and the Ark, Joan of Arc. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Ark family. <laughs> so, um, let me show you on our slide. I have that phrase with the word epistemology in there. I taught a church conference one time, a little section, a little seminar thing of it. And this is the title that I wrote for it, The Epistemology and the Process of Spiritual Formation in a Postmodern Setting. I sound smart, don't I? You throw up a couple words, you have no idea what that means. You look smart. <laughs> you know what this means? This, all this means is how do people learn in today's current culture? That's all it means. But again, you throw up words up there. Now here... I, I teach like I do, again, because I want the person who doesn't know anything about the Scripture to be able to understand what the doctrines are. I don't care if they know what the big word is for, but they need to know that God loves them. God sacrificed everything so they can have everything with God. He broke down these barriers. So that's my heart, relevant, because... Too many people think the church is, man, they're just stuck in the past, and they read an old book, and they don't even, you know, they just see it as irrelevant, and that's so not true. And so, here's my plea to you guys. We have the same mission of Jesus, of seeing people who were once oppressed, who were once blind, who were captives, that all of a sudden they can be free. They can see. They are now no longer an outsider, but they have the invitation to be an insider with God. That's been our experience, and we can share that with others. And this week, God is going to allow you to have your life to cross or bump shoulders with someone who you haven't seen perhaps in years or maybe for the first time meeting them. And it may be for this very reason of inviting them to come to church. And again, even if it's not our church, send them somewhere. But I, you know, there's no friendlier church than Church by the Sea.
Guys, Easter is a big deal. And it's not just time for us to celebrate. We'll high five, but it's also a great opportunity for us to be on mission this week. Let's live in the zone where God wants us. Please bow your heads. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love, for your call, for your grace, for your favor, to live, Lord, with your blessing. And Father, we want to live in that zone, that sweet spot of living, Lord, where we are able to receive what you have for us. We're in the right place at the right time. So we're able to receive your blessing and then be able to use them for their intended purpose. Father, we want our life to be used for your intended purpose as well. And so, Lord, I'm praying for us as a church. God, this week you'll just bring amazing, seemingly coincidental circumstances. And, Lord, we will understand them as divine opportunities that you have brought before us. May we be faithful in sharing and inviting so that, God, your kingdom will expand. Let me ask you with your heads still bowed. Let me ask you, have you asked Christ into your life? You know, it's not about being good, but it's about will you surrender your life to him? Jesus died on the cross for all of the sin, all of us. And if we would just simply say, yes, I want that. I want your forgiveness, but I want your new life, God. I surrender to you. If you would be big enough to say, God, I need your help. I need you to lead my life. He says that the only thing that's required is sincerity. So you just ask me. God, change our hearts. Lord, we surrender to you and your will. And God, are trusting you with our life. Thank you for your love, your blessing, your favor, and your grace that is sufficient to go through every circumstance. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, like for the first time you said, you know what? I, Jesus, you got my life. I, I really I sent something, and I really meant it. And use the connection card, the back of that. Let us know. We, I'd love to call you. Okay, Or we can talk afterwards. This is the best decision you could ever make. And I hope that you have done that at some point. So, Mr. Chris, will you close us up? Amen. Let's stand together. I think that's what you guys do. Let's do it anyway. We're going to do a short version of this. This is amazing. the power who brings the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes a whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. Thank you, guys. Chris and Katie, once you guys go outside, make sure you say hello to our new friends, Chris and Katie. We'll give you time. Yeah, but wait for your wife. Wait for your wife. Awesome. All right.
Guys, don't forget about next week. It's going to be an awesome time. Let me pray over you. Lord Jesus, may your favor be on us. God, position us to that right place at the right time. We would receive from you. And thank you for being our protector, our provider, and the one who empowers us to live your new life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Have a blessed week, guys.